Hi, this is a personal five day meal plan for histamine intolerance. It's made up of about 20 ingredients that are all low histamine, low FODMAP, and AIP approved. I developed this list, quite frankly, out of sheer desperation. I was having severe stomach pain, nighttime reflux, uh, tooth pain, mood swings, brain fog, depression, really awful anxiety, joint pain, the list goes on. It got to be where I I just didn't want to exist anymore, and it was early in the pandemic and impossible to find a doctor or a mental health professional. I'd actually been dealing with these problems to a lesser degree for two or three years by then. I'd seen over a dozen doctors in various specialties for each of my issues, and I really hope you're nowhere near that point. But all of that's to say, one day in early May, a friend introduced me to the relatively unknown histamine intolerance. It seemed unlikely that I had this seemingly rare thing, but I was really desperate. So that very night, I deep dove into her diet. I went cold turkey on all the things that brought me joy at that time, which at that point were basically just foods. I narrowed down the list to these 20 or so foods, and I still stick by this list three years later. The foods in italics are sulfurous, which is a tiny portion of people will have an issue with. So I delay the reintroduction of sulfurous vegetables until day four. But if you already know that you're good with stuff like broccoli and cauliflower, you're probably fine with them. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, but you can also download a PDF of this meal plan when you subscribe to my weekly newsletter of low histamine recipes. Any good elimination diet meal plan will outline the foods that you should have, as well as explain why to avoid all the other foods. In this case, all the foods that are off this list are either directly inflammatory or may stop your body from naturally calming inflammation. And this is because of histamine. Histamine is an inflammatory substance released by the mast cells and basophils in response to a perceived allergen. And let's break this down. The mast cells and basophils, mast cells in particular, are throughout your body. And they're part of your immune system, and they're there to basically react to things that are trying to harm you. And sometimes your body, like in the case of an autoimmune disorder, like mast cell activation syndrome, will attack itself. And your body produces two enzymes to break down the histamine. But if it's unavailable, unable to handle the high histamine load at that time, the inflammatory substance just stays in your system. The symptoms of histamine overload feel different to every person because every body is different. And every body reacts to allergies differently. Some people have anaphylaxis. Luckily, I never had anaphylaxis. I'm incredibly lucky in that regard, but some people never really feel that racing mind or anxiety that I have. Um, I've never had hives. A lot of people get hives. Every body is different. But beyond histamine, some people do have co-sensitivities to certain substances. Any such sensitivity can cause very similar reactions and symptoms to histamine intolerance, and that's why the shopping list is so limited. But before starting the diet, I highly recommend preparing and freezing most of your meals ahead of time. While you could approach this slowly, taking out the worst offenders, the highest histamine foods, day by day, a lot of people have issues with even the additives and flavorings in certain foods, especially packaged foods. So if that's actually your main issue, a true low histamine diet would help you. But easing into the diet would offer little to no relief at all, since there are additives in most things these days. And you just kind of continue to set yourself off. Honestly, the list of foods you should take out would be way, way, way longer than the list here. It would probably just make you as sad as it initially made me. So while my approach could be described as conservative, I've been through too much agony over the last few years to not be careful. You probably have a lot of these ingredients already at home, but make sure that all of them are both fresh and organic when possible. 
Pure dried versions of the herbs and spices are usually fine, but it does increase their oxalate level. You may notice that these meals are very repetitive, which is on purpose. The easiest way to approach low histamine meals is to prep your food ahead of time and forget about it, at least for a while. If you tend to be very hungry, you should make one extra serving of each dish to put in a separate container. This can help prevent temptation to stray off diet. For these few days, if you're still hungry after a meal, add another couple ounces of meat per meal or another two tablespoons of oil or coconut cream. Or even better, add in more vegetables. Upping your protein in each meal will help you feel fuller longer, however, and it'll help pace how quickly the calories hit your system. I ended up needing to take an extra stomach acid, which is HCL with pepsid, to digest most meats, but I no longer need them with every meal. You can also have a cup of ginger tea or chamomile tea at any time, which will help with your digestion, but I don't recommend having any in the last couple of hours before bed. This is in an effort to lower the volume of stuff in your stomach before you lay down. And don't worry, you will be able to explore many more creative low histamine recipes after your first week. Again, feel free to pause the video to take a picture or write this down. On this plan, I only had two meals a day, though you can certainly have three meals in smaller portions. But when my stomach hurt so much I could barely concentrate on my thoughts, I didn't really feel up to eating very often. Plus, the break from digestion gives your body more time to heal, especially if your stomach is very inflamed. For the first week, I made it a point to drink two huge glasses of water as soon as I woke up. Then I'd begin making brunch, which on day one was a smashed sweet potato with basil chicken. I can go into more detail on the recipes in another video, just drop a comment and let me know, but there are specific directions in the guide on my site. To make the sweet potato, I just sliced it, added olive oil, and baked it at a high temp for almost an hour. The chicken is just baked chicken breast with a sauce made of basil and olive oil with salt. You can add as much or as little of the sauce as you'd like. For a snack or dessert later in the day, try a half cup of fresh blueberries with coconut cream. For dinner, we have charred kale with ginger and coconut milk, and a light lemongrass chicken. To make the kale, just despine and chop up two leaves of kale, then dry cook them for a couple of minutes. Add a little bit of oil and a dash of ginger powder, and then cook them for several more minutes. You can add a bit of coconut milk in the middle or the end for a bit more flavor, but I feel like it does make the kale a bit more bitter. Lemongrass chicken is just a stir-fried, slight flavor upgrade to plain chicken. You cook small pieces of chicken breast on the stovetop for several minutes and then add in frozen lemongrass, ginger, turmeric, and salt and cook it for several more minutes until the chicken is done. For breakfast or lunch on day two, we have rosemary roasted carrots with chopped chicken salad. Don't forget to drink water as soon as you wake up. Start by peeling and chopping a couple of carrots and then dry toasting them on a non-stick pan for a couple of minutes. Then add a teaspoon of oil and a bit of dried rosemary and cook till done. For the chicken, just slice and stir fry it until mostly done, and then take it out and chop it into chicken salad consistency. This will probably vary per person. And then just put it back in the pan and add a teaspoon of oil and about a teaspoon of fresh minced herbs from the list. You can cook it for another couple of minutes and then salt to taste. My snack on day two is one or two fresh kiwi fruits, which I actually ate with the peel on, but if you didn't get organic kiwis, definitely peel them. Dinner is butternut squash with pork tenderloin cubed to even sizes. Then I just bake everything on a tray with olive oil, sea salt, and a dash of ginger powder if you want. Day three of the diet is the same as day one. And day four of the diet is the same as day two. However, day four is also where it's probably safe to start adding in some of the sulfurous but incredibly healthy foods on the list. If you feel at all more sick by adding in any of the foods, go back to the dishes mentioned previously and only add in one new ingredient each day. This whole diet is to get an idea of what may be causing all of your symptoms, so you can hopefully go back to your doctor and have more of an idea for them than I had for any of the, I think, 15 doctors I saw before I discovered histamine intolerance. 
For day five, you can choose any combination of the mains and sides described here and continue adding a new food or two if you've started. If you're feeling really great and haven't reacted to anything so far, you may be getting restless. <laughs> For those feeling ready to dive into some more creative low histamine recipes, I have a lot of them on my site linked in the description. And finally, I have some tips for sticking to the low histamine diet. Because while this diet is an incredibly healthy one to follow in the short term, it's not always the easiest. But just take it one meal at a time. I've compiled some more tips on the site, but if you're already feeling overwhelmed, these should get you started. Just make sure you set yourself up for success by making your home amenable to the diet. Otherwise, you may find it harder than necessary to make it through even these first five days. And take it from me, any off-diet food can bring about a reaction, even the smallest amount. If you really want to follow a diet to see if you have histamine intolerance, then you need to limit your intake of all high histamine foods. My top seven tips for sticking to the diet are to, number one, reduce stress. This is obviously easier said than done, but when your body feels threatened, like in a period of stress, for example, a pandemic, it stays on a hairpin trigger. If you're constantly stressing about what you eat and whether you're having a reaction right now, you'll only worsen your symptoms. Number two, freeze everything. Remember the importance of freezing any prepared foods and keeping vegetables as fresh as possible when you're initially buying the ingredients. If you buy fresh meat, stick it in the freezer immediately and cook it from frozen. Number three, have remedies on hand, both natural antihistamines and anti-inflammatory foods, in case of reaction. It's okay to still be having a bad reaction and a bad day. That doesn't mean you're not healing. It's okay to still need an antihistamine on day three as your body won't recover from severe inflammation overnight. This is also easier said than done. And number four, keep all high histamine foods as out of sight as possible. Somewhere on the outside of your fridge and pantry, you can even keep a note card with the list of meals you're going to eat that day. Just distract yourself from thinking about food during this time, and do as much meal prep as you can ahead of time. Number five, keep a symptom diary of any ongoing histamine symptoms throughout the diet for later adjustments, preferably by your doctor. Number six, keep all food on one shelf in the freezer and one shelf in the fridge so that you're not even tempted to look elsewhere. You can see my lowest mean meal ideas previously for the shopping list. And finally, number seven, Please, please, please buy organic when possible, as the irritant level is generally lower. If you can't afford to always buy organic, then make sure you check out the Dirty Dozen. It's a list kept by the Environmental Working Group as to the most irritant-filled vegetables and fruits that you should always try to buy organic when possible. And if you're purchasing one of those, try to buy them organic. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more content on low histamine recipes and my low histamine life.